Hello all, welcome back to Tidal Gardens. In this coral spotlight, we will be taking a look at Platygyra, a coral commonly referred to as a brain worm coral. I use the name Platygyra very loosely to describe any number of similar brain corals. When it comes to classification, there are a number of very similar looking corals that are a challenge to differentiate from one another. Not only do they look similar, on occasion they grow differently in captivity, making them resemble another coral entirely as time progresses. The corals that I'm showing in this video may be Platygyra, or possibly Paragoniastria, or Leptoria, even Favites. Also, depending on when you watch this video, they may have gotten shuffled around into different genera altogether. Here and there, I'll touch on some of the differences that I see to illustrate the challenges in identifying what is what, but I want to focus more on the care tips for these corals because those are largely consistent. Let's start first with lighting. We keep platygyra in low to medium light intensity here at Tidal Gardens, which is right around 50 to 100 par. These maize brains are photosynthetic corals, meaning that they get nutrients from the products of photosynthesis carried out by symbiotic dinoflagellates called zooxanthellae living in their flesh. Zooxanthellae utilize chlorophyll to absorb light, and they produce simple sugars that the coral can consume for energy. While some corals are more light-loving than others, platygyra tend to be less demanding. They are adaptable, however, and we have kept them in higher light aquariums, but there isn't much benefit in doing so. Their color stays fairly consistent regardless of lighting intensity. If your tank is brighter than 150 to 200 par, you can still keep platygyra, but I would recommend a long acclimation period to these higher light intensities. If you have a colony of platygyra and want to experiment with higher light, remember that lighting that is too bright risks burning the coral, and that will happen quickly. If you start to see the coral turn a lighter shade and then bleach out, it is time to move it to a dimmer location. It is possible for a platygyra that has been bleached to recover, but it can take a long time. Now that we've covered lighting as a source of energy for platygyra, let's quickly cover the topic of direct feeding. Platygyra are one of those corals whose appetite sneaks up on you. They almost never openly display feeding tentacles during the daytime. They might do it more at night, but generally speaking, it's not typically seen. That does not help if you want to actively feed these corals. But if you're able to turn off your flow for about 30 minutes, you can spot feed them small foods every few days, which will turbocharge their growth rate and help their coloration. Normally, we feed them a little bit of powdered food, such as reefroids. However, for a change of pace, we decided to feed them roe by reef nutrition. It is nice to see what types of food corals are willing to eat, and it's been a fun exercise for us to collect time lapses with different products. Moving on to flow. Platygyra can handle a wide range of flow from low to medium strength, but you want to avoid super strong flow that would strip the flesh off the coral. You can have a very powerful flow shooting over the top of this coral, but even a weak power head directed right at its flesh may bother it, so keep a watchful eye for this sort of thing. By the way, this is true for just about any coral. You don't want constant direct flow right at any colony. Periodic random flow is fine, as is indirect flow, but yeah, don't point a pump right at it 24-7. As for placement, I like to keep them on the aquascape as opposed to on the substrate. This is especially true if the substrate is fine in texture. My worry is having substrate collect in the valleys of the coral and the flesh dying back as a result. Normally, the coral can slough off detritus and debris like that, but areas down towards the substrate tend to be lower flow and higher particulate, whether it be detritus or the substrate itself. 
and that extra concentration makes it more difficult for the coral to eliminate that waste off of itself. Having said that, when you put a platygyra on the aquascape, you'll have to pay attention to how secure it is as it grows. As a frag, it's not going to be a big deal. But as they get larger, they grow out like a plate, and the right flow could lift it off the rocks if it is loose. As for chemistry, platygyra are a stony coral and have requirements similar to most other reef building corals. They require consistent levels of calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium in order to grow their skeleton. I recommend values close to natural seawater levels with an emphasis on consistency over specific values. I would go as far as saying it is better to keep suboptimal chemical levels consistent rather than trying to fix low levels in a knee-jerk fashion. If you're experiencing low levels, say for example low alkalinity, you can add a supplement to boost it, but first double check your test results, especially the test kit, to make sure that you are actually experiencing low levels in your system. If you still are, you can make these changes slowly over the course of weeks until you reach a level more in line with natural seawater. To maintain consistent levels, the amount of supplementation will depend a lot on the size and growth rate of the stony corals in your tank. Platygyra are slow growing and don't really soak up those major elements quickly. A mixed reef aquarium focusing mainly on slower growing LPS might get away with only doing water changes or maybe a little bit of calc wasser to replenish the major and minor elements. But it is always a good idea to periodically test to make sure that your levels aren't just falling off of a cliff. Skeleton building macro elements aside, stony corals are sometimes more sensitive to declining water quality. In particular, pay attention to elevated nitrate levels. Low nitrate levels around 5 to 10 parts per million are more or less welcome for large polyp stonies but around 30 to 40 parts per million of nitrate, and you might start running into some issues. If I see a coral suddenly recede, my mind immediately goes to possible nitrate issues. To remedy elevated nitrates, I look to up nutrient removal through more aggressive protein skimming and detritus removal and more water changes in general. You can try to limit nutrient input by cutting back on feeding, but I tend to favor heavier feeding and dealing with the possible overages than underfeeding because I see such a benefit to feeding. And I think that on average, most aquariums aren't even getting remotely enough food. Finding that balance is something that you're going to have to experiment with your own system. Okay, that does it for this coral spotlight on Platygyra. I hope you enjoyed the video, you guys. If you'd like to see more on these corals or perhaps purchase one of them for your reef tank, please visit us at tidalgardens.com. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, happy reefing.